I will tell you all something that Michael Card does not know. Oh, boy. Well, that would, that would sink a battleship, what I don't know. No, y'all are in on a little secret. I don't know that I've ever told anybody this in here. Oh, gosh. When I was Wait, wait. Do you imagine how I feel inside when he says that? <laughs> when I was trying to figure out how I wanted the ceiling painted, Mike is the one what? who was my inspiration. Is there a bald guy up for there? Torah to relationship. No. And at the very end of the chapel, you'll see in Greek the passage he just quoted from John's revelation. In Greek, you do a skene to theu, metaton anthropon, kai skenose, met auton. Behold, the dwelling of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. Wow, very cool. And, and Mike Carn is the wow. inspiration for that. Really? Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. So, with that, uh, we'll get straight to the Q&A. You got any insights on what uh, the disciples thought when Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God is at hand? Well, uh, you know, again, this is just my understanding. It seems to be when he says kingdom, he kind of means him. Right? The kingdom of God is near you. At least that's part. I'm sure there's, there's a much bigger answer. One thing I've learned is that a lot of times we want the answer to be one thing. And the answer is not just one thing. It's, it's bigger than that. So there's all kinds of associations other, with kingdom. And there, there are people here who are infinitely more, uh, I don't know, you know. All right. Infinitely more qualified. Any banjo questions? I'm, I'm yes. About that. Um, <laughs> how did you meet your mentor? Oh, good. Bill, uh, William Lane was my, uh, is my, was my uh, mentor. He passed away in uh, March 7, 1999. Uh, I was, a, I was a, a wildlife management major at Western Kentucky University. I was going to do bird counts for the forestry service, which I still think would be a really cool job. <laughs> and I took a huma had to take a humanities class. I was a believer, loved the scripture, uh, and I, had, I walked into this class, William Lane, a PhD from Harvard, spoke 16 languages, taught the Bible from memory. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, I was raised in a very fundamentalist tradition where we were taught that those kinds of people are the bad guy, <laughs> right? The professor is going to tear your faith apart and leave you to put it back together on your own, right? You beware those men. So I go, I sit in this class, and Bill walks in first day, sits on the desk, real quirky. Uh, he said, uh, my name is, uh, there's only one, uh, one thing you need to know. My name is William Lane. There's only one thing you need to know. I am a man under authority, the authority of God's word. And I go, I want to be that guy, <laughs> really. And it was 27 years together, so yeah. All William right, Lane. if you could say only one thing about Matthew, what would it be? Oh, God. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, Matthew, Matthew is interested in identity. Ma the Gospel of Matthew, he's telling us who we are, right? And, but the thing is, all, here's, a, here's, a, here's a big wordy sentence for you. All self-revelation in the New Testament is Christological. By that I mean, if you're going to understand who you are, Matthew's going to tell you who Jesus is because your identity comes from him. Because Matthew is writing to people who don't know who they are anymore. They're Jews who are being kicked out of the synagogue. I uh, didn't have time to talk about it. It's, it's, it's interesting, I think. How did you decide to write songs? Bill Lane. I did not decide to write songs. Uh, Dr. Lane, uh, one day, he given leadership to a little uh, black church, Cecilia Memorial Presbyterian Church, 25 elderly members. And uh, I started going to that church to be close to him. And uh, one day he, he said, uh, you play the guitar, don't you, Mr. Card? Yes, sir. But in college, guitars are for attracting women, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, here's my sermon for next week. Write us a chorus. And I would love to say, God spoke to me and my, you know, my obedience. I, was a, a I just wanted to please Bill, right? <laughs> All I've got is mixed motives right? Isn't it great that God uses mixed motives? Because that's all we got. And so, Stranger on the Shore, that was the first song I wrote for Bill from, from an incredible sermon. I had his content for six years. Not too bad, right? Yeah. 
you tell an amazing story about being with him when he died. Yes. Can you take a minute and share that? Sure. Um, 1998, he's the head of the religion department at Seattle Pacific University. He, he gets multiple myeloma, which they call the beast. It's a blood cancer that kind of eats you up from the inside. And he called me. Uh, I was sitting in the back of a tour bus, and he said, uh, they've, give, they've given me six months to live. He said, I don't want to die here. You have no collegiality. He used that word all the time. And the professors, really, other professors didn't get close to him. The students, the first year he was there, he was professor of the year, right? Because the student loved Bill. The other professors, not so much. So anyway, he said, can I come to Franklin and show you how a Christian man dies? Then what do you, what do you even say to that? You know, <laughs> yes. So he moved in. Uh, he and his wife came and lived uh, in Franklin. We uh, we were going to start a ministry together. It didn't end, end up not happening. And uh, he lived 18 good months. Uh, he was discipling young pastors, mostly African-American pastors, because that was his heart, uh, and taught a Bible study every, uh, every week with about 800 people. If you want it, it's online, uh, byfor.org, B-Y-F-O-R.org, uh, William Lane. It's, it's this man who wrote the commentary on Mark, teaching it for the last time, knowing that he's dying. And uh, March 7th, I was with him. I was holding his hand when he died, and I saw how a Christian man died. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, long No, answer. thank you for that. Um, we've got some song requests, and okay. we don't really have... It's not fair to abuse you for more than one, uh, unless you don't pick the right one, and then it's going to be two. <laughs> Why did it have to be a friend who chose to betray the Lord? And why did he use a kiss to show them that's not what a kiss is for? Only a friend can betray a friend. A stranger has nothing to gain. And only a friend comes close enough to ever cause so much pain. And why did there have to be a thorny crown pressed upon his head? It should have been a royal one made of jewels and gold instead. It had to be a crown of thorns because in this life that we live for all who would seek to love a thorn is all the world has to give. And why did there have to be a heavy cross he was made to bear? And why did they nail his feet and hands? His love would have held him there. It was a cross for on a cross a thief was supposed to pay. And Jesus had come into the world to steal every heart away. Yes, Jesus had come into the world to steal every heart away. Mm. Thank you.
for an affirmation junkie, this is a great way to spend the evening, I'll tell you. Thank you. I mean, really, thank you. I, I, I appreciate the encouragement. This was an old song. This was uh, written, I don't know, before most of you, a lot of you were, well, uh, some of you were born. There's a lot of old people. <laughs> no, no offense, but. There sits Simon, so foolish and wise. Proudly he's tending his nets. Then Jesus calls, and the boats drift away, and all that he owns he forgets. But more than the nets he abandoned that day, he found that his pride was soon drifting away, and it's hard to imagine the freedom we find from the things that we leave behind. And Matthew was mindful of taking the tax and pressing the people to pay. But hearing the call, he responded in faith and followed the light and the way. And leaving the people so puzzled, he found the greed in his heart was no longer around. And it's hard to imagine the freedom we find from the things that we leave behind. Every heart needs to be set free from possessions that hold it so tight. Cause freedom's not found in the things that we own. It's the power to do what is right. With Jesus our only possession, then giving becomes our delight. And we can't imagine the freedom we find from the things that we leave behind. And we show a love for the world in our lives by worshiping goods we possess. But Jesus said, lay all your treasures aside and love God above all the rest. Because when we say no to the things of the world, we open our hearts to the love of the Lord. And it's hard to imagine the freedom we find from the things that we leave behind. Oh, and it's hard to imagine the freedom we find from the things that we leave behind. Thank you.